Hey folks, this is Akshay Dhavre and welcome to another video from Photographic. Today we're going to look at the ISO performance of the Leica Q2 and I'm going to pit it against the A7 III which has been my standard for ISO over the last four years. So let's see what you've got. Alright, so what we have today is uh, three pictures from the Sony and three pictures from the Leica. And I'll tell you how I stumbled upon the situation. I was uh, coming back home quite late one night after an office outing. And I saw my room was dark, there was, the lights weren't on. And there was this light streaming in from the window uh, quite far away. And it was creating a very nice reflection inside my room. And uh, I found that very interesting. And so I wanted to take some pictures. And I had my Leica in the bag. So I took it out, took a couple of pictures. And I saw uh, some odd behavior. And I wanted to explore that a little bit more. Uh, and it has implications on how I shoot with the Leica, uh, as you will see. So I was shooting at... 12,800 and 25,600 ISO in that situation. We are not going to go that crazy at all. Uh, I've shot these images at 800 ISO. Now, ISO is different between camera manufacturers, um, but if you look at the exposure, it feels like the sensitivity is roughly similar for the Leica and the Sony. And so we're going to use 800 as our base ISO and we will look at what these images look like. Now, the reason why I've set this up like this is because there is a very harsh um, blown out highlight uh, in the picture here. And there is also very deep shadows uh, behind the guitar. And so uh, what's gonna happen here is that the highlight is washed out. Uh, now, this is a Sony file. You can see that I've shot it at a hundredth of a second at f2.8 and ISO 800. Um, it's a good exposure for the guitar, but the lamp is completely blown out. And I cannot recover this. Uh, even if I pull the highlights back completely, uh, I'm just gonna get a muddy gray over here. And so this is unusable. Uh, so if I had to shoot this kind of situation, I will have to underexpose the photograph. Uh, and that's where um, the situation comes up. So what I've done is uh, I've shot another picture at 1 400th of a second and f2.8 and ISO 800. So the same aperture, the same ISO, but the shutter speed uh, is two stops underexposed, right? Two stops faster. And so this is the picture that I get. Uh, now, if I try to recover the highlights, I can recover almost all the highlights. Uh, so you can see that there's a holder here, there's a rim, uh, there's the inside of the lampshade and the outside, uh, and it all works perfectly fine. So I can now recover my highlights. Uh, but now the picture is, of course, underexposed by two stops. So what we're going to do is increase the exposure by two stops. right? Uh, and so that's where we are. I'm going to recover the highlights because that's what I originally wanted. And this is all right. Uh, it's not great. I'm not uh, you know, doing a lot with this image because what we really need to look at is the noise in the dark areas of the picture. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'll do a little bit of shadow recovery. Um, so you know, a little above the halfway mark, uh, 60. These numbers don't mean anything really. Right? They're just a scale. Uh, and so we are roughly going a little above the halfway mark in terms of recovering shadows. And I think this is good uh, because I can see a little bit of the back of the sofa here. There's a distinction between that and the side of the guitar. Um, and the guitar itself is uh, exposed properly. Uh, and you can see that there's quite a lot of noise here. Uh, all these specks that you see uh, is all noise. Uh, you can also see that the front of the guitar is quite noisy. Uh, the curtain here in the background and the wall, is quite a lot of noise. Uh, and so this is two stops 
of underexposure uh, being recovered uh, and then shadow recovery on top of that. Um, and so I get a lot of noise uh, in this image. It's not completely unusable, but it's something to be aware of. Uh, it's not, uh, if you push it further, uh, you might get in trouble if you're trying to print these images especially. Um, what's interesting is another image that is underexposed by two stops. But what I've done here is I've kept the same shutter speed and the same aperture and I've reduced the ISO by two stops. Uh, so instead of ISO 800, uh, one stop down is 400 and another stop down is ISO 200. And so I've shot this at ISO 200. Uh, and so we're going to do the same recovery for this image as well. Uh, so I'm going to bump up the exposure by two stops. I'm going to recover the highlights completely and I'm going to recover the shadows at 60. And this is the image that we get from that exercise. And so if you quickly look at the comparison, this is the image with ISO 800 and this is the image with ISO 200. And there's a significant difference. And so uh, even in the background in the curtains here, you can see that there's a lot of difference. And essentially I'm getting the same output. I'm able to recover the highlights. Uh, I'm able to get a good exposure on the front of the guitar. I'm able to recover some details in the dark areas, uh, like the texture on the sofa here. And, um, and so everything is the same, but it makes a lot of difference to actually shoot at a lower ISO than at a higher shutter speed or aperture as well. Um, now I tried this with the Sony because I wanted to check that the Leica wasn't behaving oddly. Um, but then that also gives us a chance to compare the ISO performance between the Leica Q2 and the Sony a7 III. Uh, now these sensors came out maybe two years apart. Uh, Leica is actually a newer sensor and uh, Sony is an older sensor. Sony came out in 2017 if I'm not wrong and the Leica Q2 came out in 2019. So the sensor must have been developed somewhere around that time. Uh, of course uh, the Leica sensor is a 47 megapixel sensor whereas the Sony is a 24 megapixel sensor and packing in those many megapixels in the same amount of space will create noise problems. So it's not a surprise uh, that the Leica has some problems in the noise department, uh, but I just wanted to take a look at how severe that is. So again, I've done exactly the same thing with the Leica um, shot correctly at uh, 1 25th of a second. Um, the Aperture is 2.8, ISO is 800. Uh, and so we're getting very similar exposures, by the way, at the same sensitivity across these two cameras, which is good. Um, and highlights are blown out. You can't do anything with the highlights. So this image is not usable. Uh, and so here is the uh, image with the faster shutter speed uh, while keeping the same ISO. Uh, and we're going to make the same adjustments here. So bumping up the exposure by two uh, stops, uh, bringing down the highlights completely. That, that, that actually looks really bad. Uh, uh, oh, minus 60. Yeah, and so that looks okay. Uh, I, so one thing to observe is that you're able to recover the highlights to a much larger extent with the Leica file than with the um, than with the Sony. Uh, so that's something to note. Uh, and then we're going to do the same adjustment to our shadows, um, which is recover the shadows by 60. And this is what I'm talking about, right? So if you look at this, I mean, it's just, this is unusable. Uh, you cannot use this file for printing or for anything really right this is a shot that I mean you had to take a shot in a pinch and so it's better than not having a photograph but this is very difficult to use 
Uh, now there are there's other software that does uh, noise reduction really well, uh, and even here we haven't applied any noise reduction. Uh, so there might be ways to salvage this file, but just as a starting point, uh, this is a lot of noise. And we'll try the same experiment with uh, the Leica. Uh, so I've shot this again at 125th of a second, but uh, at ISO 200. And so uh, again, bumping up the exposure by two, uh, highlight reduction by 60, and shadow recovery by 60. Uh, and now if you see, uh, the noise is better controlled. Uh, so again, if you compare the two Leica files, This is the one shot at 800 ISO, and this is the one shot at 200 ISO. There's a world of difference uh, between the two. Uh, but if you compare this image, uh, so this is the best image that we got out of Leica in this particular situation. And if you compare that to the Sony image uh, in the similar situation, um, there's just no comparison, uh, right? The Sony image is much cleaner. Uh, the background, I think, is also a little cleaner in the Sony. Uh, that might be negligible. Uh, but if you look at the dark areas, uh, the, the Leica file is definitely worse off. And so you're going to have to put some effort into this one to make it usable. Now, one of the things that I wanted to try uh, was to do this same exercise in Capture uh, Capture One as well, uh, because I had heard a lot of, when I was doing my research before buying the Leica, I had heard a lot of photographers talk about using Capture One for Leica and Fuji files, whereas Canon, Sony, and Nikon work really well in Lightroom. And so I wanted to run the same experiment in capture one so i have the same files open in capture one Oops. now i want to see what capture one does to leica and so uh, here is the file with uh, uh, one five hundredth of a second so two stops underexposed by increasing the shutter speed uh, so i'm going to bump it up by two minus 100 recovery by the way we saw that uh, lightroom was able to recover more from the highlights of the leica file um, capture one isn't so capture one generally i think is not able to recover highlights uh, as well as lightroom and um, we're going to bump up the shadow by 60. and so uh, this is the file for Leica, again, a lot of noise. Uh, and by the way, I just want to make sure that no. So noise reduction was also uh, at 50. So this is the file uh, without any noise reduction and with the recovery that we had done for Lightroom. Uh, let's compare that the Lightroom picture. So this is what we got in Lightroom. I think Lightroom does a better job in the lit areas and far worse in the dark areas. Um, capture one, I, I think is maybe consistent, uh, but actually this part, the correctly exposed part um, looks much worse in capture one. And um, the darker part is a little better in terms of just noise, but I don't think it's usable, right? And so, that's what you get out of uh, Leica uh, Q2. If you're shooting at 800 ISO, I mean, if you're underexposing by increasing the shutter speed. Now let's look at the best file that we can get from Leica. So this one is uh, shot at ISO 200, uh, but with one hundredth of a second. And so we are underexposing by reducing the ISO. And so let's do the same thing. And there you go. 
so that's the file that uh, we are getting from capture one uh, as against the same file from Lightroom. So let's quickly look at this one. Yeah. And again, if you So there is actually a difference in how these files look as well. Right? Because I think the highlight recovery in Lightroom uh, is a little more aggressive. Um, Capture One I think is a little more natural, uh, but of course you're not able to recover the highlights so completely. Uh, so Lightroom, we are only at minus 60 and the picture is already feeling a little unnatural. Uh, the color has changed, it's a little cooler and uh, it's beginning to feel a little unnatural. Uh, the capture one photograph feels natural, uh, although you've tried to recover the highlights. Uh, but of course, there's no more space to recover highlights anymore. So this is the best that you can get if you're going to get the right exposure. So in this situation, uh, if you look at the way the guitar is exposed, um there's there's a flatness in the lightroom file uh, and also the noise is more pronounced in the lightroom file whereas in the capture one file uh, the noise is controlled a little better uh, i just want to make sure that so noise reduction luminous noise at least is at zero and so um Capture One seems to do a better job with Leica, for sure. Uh, but the more important lesson for me from this entire experiment is that shooting at lower ISOs is always better. So if you're in a situation where you have to underexpose, then you better do it by reducing the ISO rather than by increasing the shutter speed. And this is a bit of a tricky thing because with Leica, by the way, it is prone to blowing out the highlights. Uh, and I've already felt this multiple number of times while I've shot uh, the Leica in the last month. Uh, if I'm out shooting street and if there's a sky, patch of sky in the photograph, I have to be careful because it is very, very easy to overexpose the sky. And once you overexpose, there's no recovery. Uh, you've seen that with the, with the original files that we shot. And so you have to be really careful and not to expose, um, overexpose the highlights. But what that means is you are going to underexpose your images quite a bit and then recover them in uh, post processing. And so when you're making that decision to underexpose, it is important to keep in mind that the best way to do this is by reducing the ISO rather than by using a higher shutter speed. So. That's a quick look at the ISO performance of the Leica Q2 against the A7 III. The A7 III has really spoiled me. It has been my standard for ISO performance over the last three years. And I've just gotten used to not worrying about ISO at all. And so it's a bit of a bummer that with the Leica, I need to start thinking about ISO again. Uh, but there are, of course, other advantages to uh, shooting with the Leica Q2. And We'll keep exploring those in future videos. So, see you in another one. Bye.